here's our project for today. It's a nice and simple 1930s, just possibly 1920s council house. Um, we're in Bradford on Avon and the uh, local authority at the time have spent a fortune building it with nice natural stone blocks. Starting with the chimney then, uh, this one appears to have been rebuilt in a reconstituted stone. Natural stone, very prone to weathering and if we uh, go over there a bit, I don't know, that's about as far as I can zoom in. The further of those two chimneys is still of natural stone and you can possibly see that it is very weathered indeed. So uh, this one's been reconstructed. The lower part beneath that little drip course you can see is still natural stone and uh, it has lead flashings there to protect the junction of the chimney with the roof covering, keep the rain out. We have a hipped roof. That's the hip on the right hand side there. It's got a covering of interlocking. No, it doesn't. It has a covering of clay double Roman tiles. I was going into autopilot then. Uh, they're quite old, but they're in fairly good condition. I mean, they look like all the tiles to the other houses, so I dare say they're original. So they'll be getting on for 100 years old and still in fairly good nick. We've now got a mixture of modern plastic and old cast iron rainwater pipes. So the gutters to the front are cast iron. Those ones are plastic but they are still discharging into a cast iron downpipe. There's the rear downpipe. Now, as you're aware, uh, ferrous metals rust. Rusting involves an expansion process and this can break up the, uh, the pipes. And this one very obligingly has uh, a couple of fractures in it and a piece, a uh, chunk of cast iron's missing now. So that tends to be the fate of cast iron gutters and downpipes. Down there, not rainwater at all, but uh, a plastic uh, waste pipe from the utility room. It looks like it might have been white or it might have been grey, but uh, these don't last forever either. They get exposed to the sunlight and become brittle and they break up too. So uh, the cast iron has done rather well by comparison. These external walls are approximately 290 millimetres deep where I measured them and I think that probably includes a plasterboard dry lining in part. But uh, lots of interesting things here. Firstly, it's a local limestone. If you get up nice and close, you can see it's absolutely full of little bits of shell. But this does make it rather prone to surface weathering. So uh, that one's a bit pitted and a bit more there. I believe that big round blob there is a sign that it's had cavity wall insulation. I've seen that a few times. I've gone around the back of the house where it's quieter, but you can see uh, the odd blob there. There's one under that window there and one to the right of that window. So I think that's where a rather large drill has dug some holes out of the wall to put the cavity fill in. Cavity wall insulation is a good idea most of the time, but well, this is one of the examples where it could be contributing to a problem. I'll explain if I go back around the front. Here is the front right corner of the building, and we can see at the uh, joint between the lower and upper blocks there, there's a physical bituminous kind of damp proof course. Now around the front it's appropriately located above ground level, it's underneath those air bricks there, so it's about six inches up, as it should be. Come around to the corner, there's a path here, and that's reduced the height, or the space if you like, between the surface of the ground and the damp proof course. And if you look down there, you can see how that gap slowly disappears. And by the time you get to the doormat, the damp proof course is at or below ground level. Round the back of the house, therefore, the um, damp proof course is well and truly underground and won't be functional, so it will be possible for moisture to migrate laterally through the outer skin of the cavity wall and then with cavity fill it'll possibly migrate through the cavity fill, make that sopping wet, so you've got a, a pond of water at the bottom of the wall and uh, then it can soak through the internal skin of the cavity wall too and then you have a bit of a dampness problem which uh, we can identify later. Here's another curious thing though. Back at the front of the house. If we look down here, 
we can't see it but we know that our damp proof course is in here and if you come up one block that's several inches we've got a modern plastic damp proof course in there so somebody's gone to the trouble of cutting a slot and sliding in a modern plastic damp proof course all the way around this house but what possible use could a plastic damp proof course be doing well above ground level in a house with cavity walls if anyone knows the answer to that question I'll be interested to learn um, there it is you see there's the damp proof course there's the ground all the way down there very strange thing to do there has probably been a little bit of settlement to the building you can see the keystone over that window is a little bit dislodged and the windowsill underneath the window is um, well it's tilting downwards at both ends which rather suggests that that column of masonry wall there has settled into the ground a bit further than that column of masonry and windows there very common problem with Georgian houses and then you've got another column of solid masonry from top to bottom there which hasn't gone down quite so much so uh, the bit in the middle has not sunk quite as far as the rest of it, resulting in that crack through the window. So I might be talking nonsense, but it sounds... I'm, I'm persuading myself anyway. There's your subfloor ventilation. There's plenty to the front and left hand side of the building, but none to the rear. Evidently there have been a few structural alterations. So there's an old doorway. The lintel remains in place, but it's been blocked up and then I guess there was a window there but the opening above it has been enlarged and a new reconstituted stone steel reinforced lintel's gone in above a pair of patio doors and uh, even from an earlier generation then you've got a slot cut in the wall with the remains of a lead flashing in there all well, looks a little bit ugly unfortunately now but uh, that slot really needs pointing in with some nice lime mortar to keep the rain out this is a little bit of modern history. What we've got here is, uh, well, it says it on there. It says rent kill damp proof course. So I presume this is an electro osmotic damp proof course. That's a groovy idea, but I don't think they ever worked. Um, and I shall probably have to go home and Google it because I can't remember the uh, alchemy that uh, is supposed to make dampness go away. This is the back of the house. Um, we're on a concrete floor here, which is a bit of a bonus. Um, you can see, looking through the patio doors, that the ground outside the house is at the same level as the surface of the floor inside the house. So as discussed when we are out there, um, the ground's above the damp proof course. So there's nothing stopping moisture migrating laterally through the wall other than the cavity, which we think is full of uh, cavity fill. So. Um, one should never rely on these things too much, but uh, what else have we got to go on? I've made a couple of little holes here already, so I won't make any more. And uh, there you go, it's getting a bit excited, isn't it? So it looks like there is a bit of moisture getting through the wall, and I suppose the best solution at this stage would be to lift that edge of the patio, go down six inches. This is the roof space, which has been unfortunately um, improved, if you like, by, I dare say, a well-meaning DIY enthusiast. I'm not quite sure what he was aiming to achieve with this insulating material. Is it insulation or is he attempting to waterproof the roof space, especially with that bit of expandable foam around the edge? Anyway, you can get the gist of it. We have... Well, there's the chimney breast with a few stains on it, indicating a bit of penetrating dampness. But the roof ridge is up there, the rafters are underneath this material here and they're supported on these purlins which are sitting in the party wall and then they're sitting on the hip timbers over there. So the structure is probably fine. If we peer over the top of this insulating material we can see, possibly, can we? There, just about, struggling to focus but the underside of the roof slopes have been torched so there's battens uh, well between the battens there are laths and then uh, some mortar has been applied over the top of that as a secondary barrier to rain penetration 
there has evidently been a problem with rain penetration because uh, there's your purlin and underneath it there's a relatively continuous series of drips and stains which go all the way round there's the purlin to the hip end there's the purlin there's the stain and uh, not quite so obviously replicated at the back however uh, it looks like rainwater has been running down the underside of the roof slopes to meet the purlin and then dripping into the roof space so has that stopped it or is that uh, in fact causing it and then we've got the same thing down the bottom rainwater is evidently getting to the eaves and uh, so if there was a bit of rain penetration uh, then without this stuff here it would spread out throughout the roof space and possibly evaporate out relatively harmlessly but there is a risk that this is concentrating it into the front and rear eaves of the house we can see a certain amount of blackness down there so it's obviously affecting the uh, chipboard decking and then you uh, concentrate the problem around the edges of the roof and you'll probably end up with rot to the feet of the rafters and the floor joists neither of which I can see at the moment ceilings have got a wood chip finish to them in view of the age of the house we quite possibly have the last generation of lath and plaster ceilings but i can't see the ceilings anywhere so i don't know that and they seem to be fairly free of cracking although this paper will have covered it up but i guess they're lath and plaster ceilings but those are in relatively good condition we haven't mentioned asbestos yet, but there have been uh, a couple of replacement ceilings in here. Um, they're painted, so I don't know what they are, but one should always be a bit cautious. It doesn't look like plasterboard, it looks too slim. Uh, so, possible asbestos there. The walls in this house were all masonry. Uh, there have been a few structural alterations, so, um, you know, that sounds fairly solid. And that doesn't and then over there quite clearly something's come out and there would I presume be a steel beam holding the floors above in place here are the balusters around the staircase now modern building regulations require these to be a maximum of uh, 100 millimeters apart and I think the reason for this is because children like to muck about and if they're more than 110 they can get their heads through there and uh, well get stuck kill themselves possibly uh, what i used to do i used to take my little boy george along with me and i'd try and fit his head through the gaps and uh, one day he said to me he said daddy why don't you use a tape measure so uh, that's what i started doing um, down here however you can see there's a great big gap that's about 190 millimeters so if we want to uh, make this house safe uh, you need an extra baluster in between all of these and there's your kitchen um, looks a bit 1990s doesn't it so functional but with a bit of wear and tear I mean that's wear and tear isn't it and here is a relatively modern white bathroom obviously a little bit of a problem with the condensation in here not unexpected no mechanical ventilation at the moment a um, bit of wear and tear though so um, it looks all right at a glance but if you do your job properly and uh, you know that's wobbly there's a crack in the wash hand basin not really being picked up there and we kind of have the same problem with those taps as well so uh, our customer probably needs to do a bit of a bathroom refurb there's the consumer unit and the meter uh, the last electrician has very kindly put a label on there saying he inspected it in 2022 and uh, date of next inspection 21st of 11 2027 was that 21 1 27 anyway um, i think we can rely on that i reckon 
that is a defunct stop tap. The pipe beneath it has been painted. Uh, it possibly it is a lead pipe. Uh, famous last words. It's quite clearly not a lead pipe. It's magnetic. So you've got a what is it? Galvanized steel pipe there. Um, so that's going to be quite old. So maybe uh, well, obviously missing stop tap galvanized steel pipe. I think we need to mention that. Uh, our customer needs to get a plumber around to talk about modernising the water main to the property. There's a modern combination boiler in there as well. So I think we have uh, gathered enough information. Not talked about chimney breasts, have I? Never mind. Enough information to uh, give our customer a fairly comprehensive and informative report on this. 1930s, 1920s, semi-detached council house.